This is a 2012 Mercedes C180 W204 or more accurately a C204 because this is the coupe version. More specifically, this is my C180. Let's get a look inside. With the sports seats, coupe. So we do have some room in the back, these small back seats. I mean, you can fit someone in there reasonably well a small person at least let's get a look around the back i'm parked next to a hedge so you're not going to get the best view around back from here all right let's get into the driver's seat Hot day, so the leathers, the leather is a bit hot to sit on. All right, put the key in. The steering wheel lowers. That's part of the easy entry experience. As you can see, I need to top up on my washer fluid. Otherwise, everything is currently in order. Bloody hot day, 33. 32, point, mm, 32 degrees Celsius. Very hot day. Anyway, let me get this thing on the road. The weather's changed somewhat, but you can get a good look around it now. Once again, that easy entry. The steering wheel lifts itself up when you're stepping into the vehicle or stepping out of the vehicle and comes back down once you put the key in and close the door. Makes entry and exit very simple. Welcome to Connectium, intelligent navigation system. All right, let's get this thing on the road. Excuse me if I'm a little sweaty just coming out of the gym. Safety first. Now the C180 of this generation came with the M271 engine. That is a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine petrol so this is the engine or rather underneath all that plastic is the engine four cylinder 1.6 liter petrol engine normally there's a mercedes emblem over there but it seems to have grown legs welcome to malawi good for 156 brake horsepower that's at 5300 rpm punchy little engine let me tell you, for these Malawian roads, it's got enough power. It's got all the power you need. Speed limit's rather low in town, what, 50 k's or 60 k's per hour. On the highway out of town, you're talking about 100 k's. This engine does that like a breeze. It's very easy to overtake. You're never wanting for power to drive well I don't have much to compare this car to my first car was a 2005 Toyota Paso sometimes in some markets it's known as a Daihatsu Boon that is a typical Japanese small city car and those yeah refinement is not their strong suit and then after that I had I was driving around a 2012 Toyota Corolla better than the Boon or Paso, 
little more stable at higher speeds. Somewhat, the Toyota Corolla is a cop. It's somewhat refined, I suppose, compared to the compared to the parcel. This is another level. So I don't know which dignitary is passing. It kind of ruined my flow, my train of thought, but this is another level of refinement. It's a step up from a Toyota Corolla, of course. Very smooth. Suspension is quite comfortable, quite compliant. It helps that I put this car on 225 tires. Profile is 45. The rim size is 17 inches. So with a big profile, you know, the rubber gives it, uh, it makes it more compliant for these type of roads. Malarian roads, not the greatest. Underneath all that grime, I think you can make out 225 by 45 R17. So the 225, that is the width of the tread. The 45, that is the profile of the tire. 17 is the rim size. But driving around, yeah, I can zip around town pretty easily in comfort, in relative silence. It's a great thing to travel in. It's a great thing to spend some time in. I've done maybe 20 trips to Zomba in this thing. And yeah, the 100 Ks or so that I spend on the road. Yeah, what is it? It's 70 kilometers there, 70 back, so 140. You feel as refreshed as you were when you arrive back. The seats are pretty comfortable. The ride is comfortable. It's fairly quiet. You do get a little bit of tire noise, a little bit of wind noise over the mirrors, but not that much. Automatic wipers, rain sensor in the windshield. So when it starts raining, wipers go off automatically. You don't have to turn a dial or anything. It's quite great. And it's quite a punchy engine. Like I said, you don't need more than this. There are the C200 variants, C250, C300 if you're going for the petrol engines. The diesels, I do believe there is a 220 CDI. There is a 320 CDI. I think later there was a 350 as well. Diesels, they are cheaper to run. A little more expensive to maintain. The parts are a bit more expensive. Speaking of which, this vehicle has been fairly cheap to service. I don't want to say cheap, but it's been relatively inexpensive. This and the Toyota Corolla I used to run, relatively the same to maintain. Getting the air filter, oil filter, the cabin filter, oil change. The oil might be a bit more expensive. This runs on 5W40 synthetic oil. So that might be a bit more expensive, but the parts relatively, relatively inexpensive. And servicing it, I rarely spend more than $200, the equivalent of $200, about 200 something thousand quarter. And that's basically every year. It's not expensive to run. They give it the beans here. It is fantastic. Fantastic thing to drive. I really do love this car. As comfortable as this car is, it could be better because the front right suspension seems to be starting to go. The shock absorber is not, it's not absorbing as much shock as it used to, but it's still fine. I think that will require a stop at the garage in a couple of weeks to sort that out. It's still got a little bit of life in it, but you can tell that it's starting to go. Now the M271, typically a reliable engine, fairly reliable, fairly solid unit. However, it is prone to oil leaks. And that leak typically comes from a pipe that leads to the turbocharger. What happens is there's a seal that's made of plastic and over time 
it with the heating and the cooling it cracks and that's what the leak typically comes from this particular engine did have that leak and yeah we managed to sort it out so that's no problem now but it is something to look out for and look this is a decent sized boot even though this is a coupe i think you can see the evidence of my last service in here <laughs> i should clean this out really and if it's not enough space for you what you can do is pull these levers and these let down the back seats and then you have even more storage the seat belt just letting that one or stopping that one from uh falling down flat but they do fall flat in terms of rear space it's somewhat decent actually i've never actually been back here this is my first time doing it for this review so let's just see if i put this seat back into my driving position what's it like okay not that much leg room <laughs> not that much leg room at all and then the neighbor's dog is here sniffing me right all right so not the most leg room headroom is non-existent for me i'm about 5 10 yeah so in my driving position it's not the most comfortable back here but i could do a short trip back here yeah if we we're going out with your friends going to the grocery store or to the club or something yeah i could spend a good 20 minutes back here uh, yeah it's not the worst and to get back out slide the seat forward electrically assisted and let me just see if i can get out gracefully oh my gosh ah, not the most graceful ah, ah. okay attempt number three all right i think if i try going out with my rear first ah yes all right that worked Clearly the coupe is what you go for if you're going for style rather than practicality. And speaking of style, it is quite a pretty machine. A decade old design, still looks relatively modern, still looks pretty fresh. I'm now fresh and showered. Let's get on with the review. It's really important for these turbocharged engines to let them idle for a little bit before you start off. And also when you're about to park, let the engine cool down a little bit, let it idle for a little bit before you turn it off. It improves the lifespan of the engine. In terms of fuel economy, what does this engine deliver? Well, I do a lot of urban driving, a lot of start stop all i do is drive this to work and back a lot of start stop traffic and i'm getting 12.6 liters for every 100 kilometers not bad not bad if you're considering urban driving if you get this out onto the highway the motorway extra urban driving through the country the numbers do improve for the times that i've taken this out of town it's given me about eight eight liters i could get it down to about eight liters so it's fairly economical fairly easy to run it's got a 60 liter fuel tank as well so when you fill it up it, it'll be about a week two weeks before you have to go to the pump again and that's pretty decent the transmission in this one is a seven speed dual clutch automatic that is the transmission i would recommend Mercedes manuals are just not that good. You want to stick to the automatics. Visibility is pretty good. Good view out front. I can see pretty much, I can place this car pretty much wherever I want. I can see where the corners of the car are. Visibility out the rear is all right. Because of a sloping roof line, it's a little bit hard to see. It's a little trickier to see out of this than it is in, say, the station wagon or the sedan. I've driven both of those before. 
the real big blind spot is this a pillar the a pillar is pretty thick but otherwise it's easy to reverse there's a good reversing camera on it easy to place on the road steering is pretty responsive it's more responsive when you put it into sports mode but i barely ever use that i just run this in economy because what kind of sporty driving do you do in the city sometimes when i take it onto the cholo road which is pretty windy i'll put it onto i'll put it into sports mode but outside of that i prefer to keep it in eco it's pretty lovely it's a good strong choice for any kind of luxury vehicle of this era of the 2012s to 2015 it's a good choice from what i hear the w205 the car that replaced this one is not as comfortable as the w204 in terms of suspension make of that what you will now when it comes to pricing how much are these going for on the used market well in malawi it's pretty tricky to answer that one you see if you import it you can get a good example from the japanese or singapore market for about the equivalent of ten thousand dollars or if it's from the uk market probably about seven thousand pounds from south africa i see them going for from about 200 to about 400,000 rand depending on the engine and model year and the mileage of course but when it comes to Malawi because of the duty and the excise and all these funny taxes we have to pay it might be a bit more than that when you import it you basically pay for the car twice it, the taxes <laughs> add up to about a hundred sometimes a hundred and ten percent of the value of the vehicle so if you want that to change take it up with MRA otherwise if you're trying to buy one from the local market you can see them going from about 12 million kwacha to all the way up to about 17.1 million kwacha that's the latest I've seen one being advertised for about 17.1 million kwacha pretty pricey more than i would pay for a car like this in fact it is much more than what we paid for this vehicle which was below 10 million budget at the time that was 2020 i don't know about now if we were in the market now used cars have gone up in value brakes are pretty good on this too All right, and that's pretty much it on the C180. If you have any comments, questions, put them into the comments below. If you have a vehicle you would like me to review next, let me know. And if you would be willing to source that vehicle for me, uh, I'd be glad to take it off your hands for a day just to review it. All right, stay happy, stay healthy, stay humble. Peace and love.